I've been a libertarian for many years now, and part of being a libertarian is being for a smaller government and less bureaucracy. And you know, the idea of universal health care just never seemed to, to jibe with that. Um, so I've been against universal health care. About two weeks ago, I watched Michael Moore's new movie, Sicko. That movie really made me question my position. In fact, at this point, I, I'm fairly certain that I've been wrong on this for, for many years now. Um, it just so happened I was about to head off on a vacation with my family to Vancouver, British Columbia. So I, I thought I would ask. Um, so we went up there, and and I got one interview on on video, um, and then I talked to a bunch of people. I, I would have gotten more interviews on video, except that some people were uncomfortable being filmed, and my wife was really uncomfortable with me asking people to be on camera. Uh, so I just t chatted with a number of people. Um, one shopkeeper told me that uh, the system had worked well for him and for his family because nothing serious had happened, but that uh, for more major issues, they there could be very long delays and and they could be you know fatally long. But he said the problem wasn't really the health care system; it was the uh, the strength of the unions. Uh, in particular, the new, the nurses union has such a stranglehold over the nursing industry that. They are low on nurses, but won't let nurses in from other countries, including American nurses. Uh, the other two gentlemen I talked to said the system was very good. Um, they were both in their mid to late 50s, I would guess. Um, they said people are very happy with it. One of them lives um, just a few miles from the border, and, and I asked him if anybody he knows has ever gone across the border for treatment. He says he's never heard of that happening. Uh, the other gentleman said that there had been some really serious problems with delays uh, and people dying before they got treatment uh, a number of years ago, but he said that was during a time when the country was in um, sort of a slump and there wasn't enough money in the system and that things were much better now. Um, so I should also talk about my own experience. Um, I lived in Japan for six and a half years as a video game programmer and uh, you know we had the, the universal health care there. And it always worked well. Uh, I don't think I ever waited more than 15 minutes to see a doctor. Uh, and I was I was pretty active over there, so I ended up in the hospital a number of times. Um, but I always received very good care and very very prompt. And you know it's great having the universal card because uh, you, you know as an example, I, I went over to Kobe after the big earthquake in '95 and uh, got sideswiped, fell off my bike, broke broke my wrist. Uh, so I hobbled along for about half a mile or so until I got to the first hospital I came to. And I went in, they did the x-rays, they put a cast on my arm, and I was on my way. And it was all just by showing them my card. You know, I didn't have to go to my hospital or anything like that. Um, my wife was hospitalized with tuberculosis. If you don't know, with tuberculosis, that's a nasty disease. You need to take a whole bunch of drugs. Uh, I think she was on three different antibiotics three times a day. Uh, not only that, but she was in the hospital. Uh, I think they probably would have would have kept her there for four to six months. But you know, I didn't want my wife gone that long, so I finally put my foot down and insisted that she come home after two and a half months. I told the doctor that I'm taking my wife home. So the problem for us wasn't getting care; it was ending care. Uh, they wanted to take care of her even even more. Uh, now this wasn't free. Uh, I think for that entire two and a half month hospital stay, including all the drugs, I think it cost us about $1,000. So certainly not, you know, financially debilitating. Uh, and, you know, the other issue I should point out here is that my taxes over there were actually lower than they were in the United States right before I'd left. Uh, as a as a single uh, male with no deductions, I, I think I was paying about 33% taxes in California. I mean, that's how much my check would disappear. And I got to Japan, and it was 25%. So, you know, we hear that our taxes will be 60 80%, and, well, it's not the case in Japan. So I don't see why it would have to be the case here. Then uh, in Korea, um, Korea has socialized medicine as well. Uh, but, you know, I'm not Korean, I'm not a Korean citizen, neither are my children. We were over there, and my son was, I think, two or three. He got very sick with the flu. He couldn't keep down any anything. So we had to put him in the hospital, and he was on an IV, I think, pretty much the whole time. He had a number of shots, and I think for three days of hospitalization, including the IV and everything, 
we had to pay out of pocket, and it was still only about $300, which is certainly far lower than it would have been here. One thing I realized watching Michael Moore's movie is that I've had healthcare on the wrong side of the line, the line being what's an essential service. Uh, Michael Moore points out that uh, police and fire are socialized in our country. Uh, and, you know, those are life and death things. You, you, you can't have people paying for that. Um, and it should be the same with medicine. You know, um, people should not have to discard parts of their body because they're in an unfortunate financial situation and can't afford to have them reattached. I mean, that's just, that's, that's barbaric. Um, in fact, I had a friend tell me that in, uh, in Mexico uh, a number of years ago, uh, the fire actually was sort of private. If somebody, if a fire department came and hauled your son out of a well or put out a fire in your house, you had to pay for that service. I think you'd be pretty hard pressed to find a libertarian in this country that would recommend that we privatize the fire department. Um, so anyway, I want to hear your stories. I, I want to know um, what you think of your system in your country, uh, whether it's you, you know, the United States or another country. If other countries have a better system, I want to know. Please post a video response. Uh, if you are traveling out of the United States, talk to people and let us know what you find out. Uh, let's find out what the truth really is and not just listen to what we're being told. Here's that interview that I did take. Um, yeah, so you're from uh, where exactly? Uh, Wakefield, West Yorkshire. Wakefield, West Yorkshire. So that's Great Britain. Great Britain, yes. And um, I, I've heard that, that the British uh, medical system is completely in shambles and that the American medical system is, is far superior and we should be horrified at the idea of switching over to the British system. Can you give me what your well, honest assessment? Well, the, the British system is good in one point uh, as opposed to the American where you've got to pay for everything. Yeah. Whereas the British one... Normally, you're lucky. You do get uh, very good um, uh, service from the from the uh, national health. Yeah. Uh, every time I've been in, I've always been ex extremely uh, satisfied with what they've, uh, they've come up with. I always got out reasonably uh, healthy and, and wise after the event. Uh, has there been long wait times? Pardon? Long wait times? Yeah. Um, I think it's uh, around about if you go in and you've got something wrong with your, uh, you know, like you've had a cut or, uh, or you're going to A&E, uh, the wait time's around about two to four hours, which isn't bad. It's not two to four oh, days. That's not bad. No. Uh, so, so from that point of view, it's very good. Uh huh. And um, I mean, lots of people that I know don't like the system. They think it could be a lot better. Well, every system could be a lot better. Sure. But for what? I've experienced, I've always been very, very satisfied with it. Do you know anybody who's uh, left Great Britain to go to the United States for medical services? No, I don't. No. I'm, I, know, I don't know anybody, but I've heard of people going over to India. To India? Yeah, because it's, uh, they can get um, something like uh, hip replacement done very quickly or uh, something like that. So if you're doing something like a hip replacement, you'd have to wait a while and get Yes, you would. Yeah, unless you went private. Like uh, there are lots of private um, hospitals in, in England. Uh huh. Uh, that um, cost money. Right. Of money. And do people have like a supplemental insurance if they want to use like a private system? Yeah, I suppose you can insure yourself. Um, I mean, I'm insured, but. Um, not to the extent that I could get thousands of pounds if I went into the hospital uh -huh. to have a heart. But you have a sup you have a supplemental insurance? Uh, well, it's it's like a, uh, your average house insurance. You know, just make certain that if anything did happen, you've got a bit of coming back. And why is that necessary with the national health system? Well, it's not. It's, just, it's not. It's just for your own. Of mind. So that you'll get faster service, or um, is that sometimes? The? Yeah, I see. Sometimes. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome.